Valley this morning. It's so good to have you all with us today. And in case you can't guess, we're celebrating Halloween. And I have on my witch's hat that when I turn my head, the hat doesn't move. <laughs> it's just sitting there. But we are celebrating Halloween because I won't see you again until after Halloween's over. So we're going to change our venue around just a little bit this morning. Let me introduce my guest. Well, first of all, I'm Nancy Kaysen. And co-hosting today is Judy Baker of the Cleveland Storyteller Guild. And our, our guest today, our <laughs> one and only guest today, yeah. is Ken Cagle from the Museum Center. And the reason we're changing our venue around is Ken has a group coming into the museum at 715. I didn't know anybody did anything that early except There's, us. You'd be amazed. There's quite a few that like to meet that early, especially these corporations. So uh, wow. we accommodate their needs. Absolutely. So Ken... After Ken said he could come on, we had the whole venue a different way, but because Ken has to get back to the museum, we're going to start with having Ken tell you everything that's going to happen between now and Tuesday morning at the museum, and anything after that, too. We've got a lot. we just got a lot going on. Oh, I know, because I'm going to participate in one of them. But Good. we want to be sure you all know that the museum has activities for Halloween night, as well as other things. So... Take it away, Ken, and tell us what all is right. going to happen. Well, appreciate you uh, having us on once again. It's always good to be with this wonderful person. She's going to be part of our storytelling program right. coming up at the museum. Let me let me start with the uh, the first thing. Actually, this coming Sunday, uh, Sunday October the thirtieth, from two to four, we're having a pumpkin carving class. Uh, this is the first uh, time we've ever done this, and this is with Jennifer White. Most people know Jennifer White. She's so an education artistic. curator. So She's very talented. So. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful class. Uh, the price of that is only $7 if you're not a museum member, $5 if you are. It does pay to be a member of the museum, it? really it? does, and it's not that expensive to be a member of the museum. Not so at you all. need to call Ken and talk to him about yeah. that. It's a $25 membership for individuals or $50 for family, and it pays for itself very quick. It you, really, really does. Participate in some of the programs. But anyway, that's this Sunday, October the 30th from 2 to 4. So call Tracy down at the gift shop, and she'll take care of you as far as uh, uh, reservations. Of course, Monday is the, the uh, Halloween. We all know about Monday, October the 31st. We're excited about that. We're having the sixth annual Jack-O-Lantern contest, and that is from 4 o'clock until 9. And along with that, we're going to have some storytelling from our good friends with the Storytelling Guild. Mm -hmm. Judy Baker, Maureen? Uh, me, Maureen, probably Pete, uh, Deborah, Naren Holland will be there <coughs> from 4.30 till 7, I think, yes. to do the Tall Betsy story. Exactly. Um, Several others, Owen Duncan from Max County, uh, whoever is free will be coming in shifts. Um, the stories will begin at 4 because it's a school night, mm -hmm. and we know that they're going to get the kids in and out early. Um, but we'll talk some more about that in just a minute, yeah. so you, you go on. We're excited to have you all there. Uh, but anyway, you come down to, to hear the storytelling. We've got the contest for the Jack Lantern contest uh, from the previous Sunday. You can bring your Jack Lantern in and put that in the contest. We do have uh, some mon monetary prizes, is that correct? Monetary? Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, everybody loves a little prize for their, their jack o' lantern. Right. So we're excited about that. We will be accepting those on Sunday and Monday. We're going to be open, obviously, for the pumpkin carving contest on Sunday. And then also, we're, we're normally closed on Mondays, but we'll be there Monday taking in the, uh, the pumpkin. So we'd love for people to participate in that too. As you mentioned, Tall Betsy's going to be with us again. She's been there for I about a week. She's going to be there. So she's, 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 she's up and ready in the lobby, looking proud mm -hmm. and excited to, to receive guests. So that is also Monday from 4 to 8. And if you've not heard Deborah Holland, is that mm -hmm. right? She does a great job. She does. I'm just mesmerized when she tells the story about Tall Betsy. Uh, she has a great costume. She stands next to Tall Betsy. And it's just really a, it's a very entertaining night. So we're looking forward to that. So those are the few of the Halloween things coming up. Right. So that is an option for those of you that don't want to go to the block party. Because later on today <coughs> we'll mention some other options. But always remember that the museum on Halloween exactly. has events for you. Exactly. And you do not have to be a member to enjoy these events. Exactly. But if you'd like to join, We'd please do. We'd love to have you as a member. Mm -hmm. Once again, Tall Betsy, uh, that is free. We'd love for you to come by. I think we're going to be set up on the front courtyard uh, Monday. Have the, uh, the jack-o'-lanterns displayed out there. Going to do some crafts for the kids if they're walking to and from the block party. How neat. Just stop by and, and join us. That is great. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. 
Um, can I talk about other events? You certainly may. Okay, well, I'll just keep going. While I have you captured, please. Let me back up and talk about this past Sunday. I know it's already in the yes. past, but we're, we're still riding high from that. We did have Mike Wolf from the American Pickers. Uh, many people have seen that show on the History Channel. One of Flavis's favorites. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we need to come and buy a book for Flavis. He should. I mean, I, that'd be good. Oh, good Christmas that's present. That's a good Christmas there we present. Go. Um, had a sold out crowd. We had over 300 people buy tickets. Uh, oh my he and Libby Calloway did a phenomenal job as far as talking about their, uh, their experiences being pickers. Uh, I've read half the book. It's a fascinating, interesting book. If you have ever wanted to be a picker, you need to buy this book. So we have plenty of books left in the gift store. Uh, they're $24.99. Uh, and they're autographed. We even have them oh, autographed good. if you'd like to buy an autographed copy. If you couldn't make it this past Sunday, we did sell out. We had to turn away a lot of people because of space. Mm -hmm. But it was a great program. We were real excited about that. But we do have the books. Um, the next thing we're excited about is the Holiday at Five Points Artisans Festival. I know Nancy's getting all excited over that. I think she loves she loves good art. I do. That I is really one do. of our most attended events, or one of our many attended events we're excited about. We have over 27 artists from the store. We feature uh, local artists within about a 100-mile radius here in Cleveland, North Georgia, North Carolina. So this is a festival we do twice a year, and that is November the 4th and the 5th. Uh, November the 4th, it's from noon until 5, and then on Saturday, 10 to 4. It's free to the public. Absolutely wonderful art. It's just really, it really some wonderful art. And you have art. a tremendous variety. Great variety. It's, it's just, it's wonderful. It's a great variety. And you can purchase oh, sure. from those sure. artisans. Would they have all, all the artists have their own booth. They'll have it set up. Uh, it is free to the public, so be sure to, uh, to come down and see that. But you get a chance to meet the artist. Yes. And that's what I love about these artists. It just gives you a chance to meet the person who made that product. It's not being shipped here from overseas or whatever. This right. is something you would love to, to, to buy and purchase and, and give away as a gift. And some of them you sit there and do their crafts yeah. while... Jewelry you're... artist, painting, mm -hmm. weaving, uh, baskets. Baskets, But yes. there's more than just Photography, that. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's amazing. It is. It's really great. And speaking of photography, we have our, uh, uh, this Saturday, uh, the photography exhibit opens. We've uh, had over 50 submissions for the photography exhibit. Wow. So we're excited about that. So we have a members preview this coming Saturday. Beautiful, absolutely wonderful photography. I'm just tickled to death. So from the juvenile to the am uh, amateur uh, to the professional. So we have several different categories and some beautiful, beautiful photography of East Tennessee historical places. It's really great. We have a lot of beautiful things to photograph in East Tennessee. Mm -hmm. so No lack of subject matter. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Gosh, we have several things going on. Um, one thing that I, I co-chair with a, a great committee is the Holiday at Five Points, which you yes. participate in every yes. year. I'm already ready for you. You already? <laughs> I'm already ready for you. I've got it. And, I, and I've got and, and another person who usually contributes called yes. me and said, yeah. Can you handle that? I said, and yes. Nancy so works up a great item for, for they're her. They're already ready, too. That's so great. I know I'll be walking across the street with at least two things. Well, I'll come and help you. Well, that's great. That's I may call you. I say, come get, come pick up your items. I'd be glad but, to. And that is uh, Saturday, November the 19th. And what this is, this is a, uh, it's a group of uh, people in the community, artists, florists, designers, individuals, it doesn't matter. Gift who, shop owners. Gift shop owners, <laughs> great gift shop owners, neighbors across the street. Um, who get together to create trees, wreaths, centerpieces, and then they donate these to the museum, and then we have a, uh, an auction. And that is uh, Saturday, November the 19th, from 7 into 10. Uh, tickets are only $20. Mm -hmm. We lowered the ticket price this year. We'd like to get some more people involved. The great thing about it is you see some wonderful creations. Yes, you do. But Ahmed Al Shabibi does the food. It's uh, awesome. And it's a fabulous for $20, and mm -hmm. then you get beverages yes, to go right. with that. But it's just a great night to kick off the Christmas spirit, to get you into the mood. Some beautiful creations. And you can bid on these creations. Exactly. And might take them home. I know several years ago, well, actually, I have mm -hmm. about three trees in my house yeah. that I have bought there. And they just, uh, I laugh at people and say, I just threw the sheet over the tree and put it in the closet. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It works. It works. It and, works. And I have one that... Uh, Kelly Smith did, oh, probably six years ago, that's still just as pretty as it was the night I bought it. Yeah. And and I just, I love going down there for those things. I do too. And Kelly Smith and her mom, Sue Newman, they're yes. putting their creative talents together again this year. And I'm 
show they'll come up with really something wonderful. Um, but it, it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's it just is a fun. neat event. It's not an expensive ticket. Uh, it just gives a chance. I think there's a big ball game that Saturday, so maybe this would be a great chance for the ladies to come out. I think it's, is it Vanderbilt? Oh, you know, I normally know those Tennessee schedules, but I have not looked that far ahead. I think it's it Vanderbilt be. and UT. Okay. In Knoxville. That might be. So it. hopefully the ladies, good, if they don't go to the game, or anybody, of right. course, uh, come and join us. It'll be a lot of fun. Will you have the game on somewhere? You've done that in the We've past. talked about that, yes. Okay. If we can get reception. Right. <laughs> right. Maybe, what is it, dog ears or antenna? Uh, that's, yeah, have someone stand out yeah. holding up some exactly. aluminum foil or something, whatever. That yes. would be me. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is Ken's job at the museum. It's the that thing that's would, not already defined. By that would be else. me, yes. We could take turns. Something else we're doing uh, coming up on November the 29th, that we've not done this before, we're real excited about Swing Into Christmas. I don't know if you read about this on your little flyer, but uh, this is uh, a, a new program for us this year. We're working with uh, Dan Bendrum at Tudor's Music, his little- Don Bendrum. Don, Don Bendrum, excuse Don. me. Yes, at Tudor's. Excuse me. Tudor's, uh -huh. uh, their little Cleveland community band. It's the jazz band, yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. from the Greater Cleveland Concert Band. That's the jazz band, yes. I think. They're yes. called Sassy Big Brass Band. Mm -hmm. And they were there a couple of months ago. We had a great turnout. And this is called Swing Into Christmas. His wife is a caterer. And uh, what we're going to do is for uh, tickets are $12.50. You get uh, a, a great meal. We're having three types of soups, maybe chili, a couple other soups, some desserts, soft drinks to go with that. And then obviously we get some wonderful music from the, the, their band. Right. So and, we're excited and, about that. And let me just look, say a little mention here. The last time you had this group, Jack Mitchell was on the drums. Yes. Well, Jack passed away. Oh, and he did? Yes. It, well, it's, a, this week. it's a tremendous loss to the community because Jack was a fabulous drummer, but he wasn't just the Cleveland drummer. He was nationally and internationally known. He was. I had talked with Jack uh, right before we went in the hospital, and Camp Kirkland had even called and asked him to go on his European tour that was supposed to be start this month, I think like a three-month tour, a big band in Europe. Uh -huh. But Jack felt like at his age he just couldn't commit to doing that. So, so the community lost a really great guy mm -hmm. and a drummer. He was great. He was super. Yeah. So I don't. And I didn't realize he was in his 80s. 88. Jack was 88 and years old. You, you would look at the guy and think he was probably in his late 60s right, or 70s. Right. Right. And the way he handled those drumsticks and did all that. Yeah. So, well, that so, a, but someone else will be there with uh, on the drums, and that's the 29th. That is the 20. Nine. Nine. Yes. Okay. And I'm sorry, I have to look at my list. We have so many things. It's I know hard you to do. Remember and that's wonderful. But we're excited about that. I mean, if, if if you were at the last program they did, it was just absolutely wonderful. It was July the fourth weekend. Yes. Patriotic music had a great turnout. We had to keep putting out tables and, and chairs. And you did hamburgers. Yeah, we did hamburgers yeah. on the grill outside, and and that was it was just a wonderful event. And and we didn't get to go. I, I can't remember why we didn't. Oh well, Fourth of July on the river. That's why we didn't get to go. But that's, but everybody that went just kept talking about Did it, they? how wonderful it was, <laughs> yeah. and couldn't wait for the next one. So Good. this is the next one. This is the next one, and it is a fundraiser for the museum and for the, the community band. Right, so, you know, right. But $12.50, I think, is a very reasonable ticket. That's extremely um, reasonable. Especially with the food that his wife's going to be making from Athens. She's a wonderful caterer, um, so we're looking forward to that. Once again, call Tracy for ticket information, times, and things like that. Uh, there's, there'll be a limited number you can have. Exactly. So if, you, if exactly. you're interested in going, you need to call now. Exactly. exactly. I think the 4th of July program probably had 180 people. And when you put out tables and chairs and you have the band, that's right. about the space that we can accommodate that many people. Um, this is something else new we're doing this year is Appalachian Christmas Camp for Kids. Um, how many times did I get bored when I was off from Christmas holiday. I mean, there was just oh, nothing see. to do in Sweetwater, so had to make my own. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> my own entertainment, as you, you remember. You are right. Uh -huh. uh, but we're excited about this. But it's an Appalachian Christmas camp for kids. It's December the 19th through the 21st. And it's from 8 o'clock until 3 o'clock. Once again, Jennifer, I uh, almost said Jennifer Kreklow. I always think of Jennifer Kreklow. Well, if you're up this morning, Jennifer, we're thinking about you. Hello. <laughs> Good morning, Jennifer Kreklow. Jennifer White's created another wonderful program. Uh, and um, I think they should, uh, people should call and get information about that. But it's really going to be a great camp. Uh, ages 7 to 17. Wow. So there's okay. a good, good Real good diversity age. there. Exactly. So if you're looking for something to do about the week of or the week before Christmas, call us. We'll uh, provide something entertaining. Sounds wonderful. 
and that you just got a full agenda from now until Christmas. Exactly. And the museum is such a tremendous asset to our community, folks. Mm -hmm. It's just, just a wonderful, wonderful <clears throat> building. It but is. but what's in the building is even more wonderful, it and is. the people that work there are great folks. So I appreciate Ken coming in this morning. He has to leave. So we're going to go to commercial break, and when we come back, the only person you're going to see, hopefully if the cameras will help me on this, is Judy from the Storytellers Guild because Judy is going to tell a tale. And when she gets through telling the tale, then we'll talk a little bit about the Storytellers Guild. But we're going to commercial right now, so Ken, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Call the museum if you didn't get all of that or if you got in at halftime or something. Just call mm -hmm. the museum and see what all's going on. And We'll be right back in just a minute. Don't you go away because Judy's going to tell a tale. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring, a beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango, redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin the micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. And we are back, and Judy Baker from the Cleveland Storytelling Guild is now going to tell a tale, so take it, Judy. Well, first of all, I want to encourage everybody to come uh, Monday night to the Museum Center as um, our Halloween celebration down there will start at 4. It's a school night, and we know that... Parents are going to want to get their kids out, sugared up real good, real early, and then take them <laughs> home and hopefully get them in bed before midnight. Right. But that's not our problem. Our problem <laughs> is to keep them entertained while they come in uh, to the museum. And it'll be family-friendly stories. We're not in the let's scare them out of their skins. Right. But a nice little jump tail every now and then yeah. never hurt anybody, get yeah. your blood pumping. But... Uh, I do want to encourage everybody to come, and if you want to find out how pumpkin carving, how pump jack-o'-lantern started, you'll find out Monday night. But one time there was this little girl. Oh, she was on about so big and started school. And when she started school, she became friends with this little boy, and he was only about so big. 
and they played together and they ate dinner together and they studied together. And every day he noticed that she always wore a yellow ribbon around her neck. Well, now he was curious and he said, well, why do you wear that yellow ribbon around your neck? And she'd look at him and she'd say, I ain't going to tell you. But they got a little bit bigger and they were still in school and they played together and they ate dinner together and they studied together. And she still wore that yellow ribbon. It didn't matter if she wore a pink dress or a blue dress or a red dress. She wore that yellow ribbon. And he'd say, why do you wear that yellow ribbon? And she'd say, oh, I ain't going to tell you. Well, they grew up and fell in love and decided to get married, and he made sure he just knew that with that pretty white wedding dress that she'd wear something besides that yellow ribbon, at least a white ribbon. Well, when the back door of the church opened and she started coming toward him, oh, she was the prettiest thing he'd ever seen, had a beautiful white wedding dress, a beautiful white veil, and he looked, and as she got closer, she had on that yellow ribbon. And he thought, oh, my goodness, I just knew I'd, I'd, she wouldn't wear it. But she did. Well, they were on their honeymoon, and they were newlyweds, and they were so happy together. And finally, one day, he said, honey, tell me, why are you wearing that yellow ribbon? And she looked at him, and she said, oh, I ain't going to tell you. Finally, they've been married for 67 years. 67 years, had several kids, and been so very, very happy. And every day of those 67 years, she wore that yellow ribbon around her neck. Finally, she got sick and knew that she probably would not be much longer for this old world. And she went up to him and said, Oh, honey, I just need to tell you how much I love you. Do you have anything at all you want to tell me? And he said, I have one thing I want to ask. Why, for all these years, all these years, you wore that yellow ribbon around your neck? And finally she said, because I love you and we've been married so long, I'll show you. And so she just reached back and untied the beautiful little bow in the back, and her head fell off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. This is a storyteller right here. <laughs> And they will be at the museum Monday night, night telling stories. But Judy, tell us a little bit about the Storytelling Guild. Well, the Storytelling Guild has been part of Cleveland for probably at least 20 years, if not longer. And we like to think that we're probably one of the best kept secrets here in Cleveland. I'm sure you are. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, we have had nationally ranked, nationally known storytellers mm -hmm. coming. This will be our 17th year to bring in storytellers from out of the area to have a bit of a different a perspective on storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, our upcoming story, uh, Koi Story Fest will be on um, February the 10th, 2012. Um, it'll be at the Museum Center. Elizabeth Rose will be our featured teller. Elizabeth was born in Etowah. Well, just right up the road. Just right up, up and over. Road. Just mm -hmm. up and over. She lives in the Kingston area now, is a school teacher, school principal. Uh, we've had her here before, and we're so excited about having her back because she does some of the most wonderful Appalachian traditional tales you've ever heard and some personal stories. Um, but before then, uh, we've got several events coming up. First of all, the Halloween storytelling, Tall Betsy mm -hmm. storytelling at the Museum Center on Monday night, beginning at 4. Uh, we will have stories almost continuously with the last story beginning at 8. The way we do it, we all take turns. You'll come in, um, be seated in, in one of the, the rooms, wherever Ken uh, has room for us, and a teller will get up and tell a story. Well, after that teller gets through with their story, um, we'll take a long enough break that people can come in, can come out, can swap out, and another teller will get up and tell a story. So it's not like you're going to have to come in and wait 10 or 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, for another session. We're not sessions. We will continuously tell yeah, stories. And y'all have done this enough that you've got a rhythm to it and it, there's not a problem with there's it. There's not a problem with it. Um, and in listening to the stories uh, prior to them, a teller is going to be able to get up and not tell the same story. Or if they tell a story that's been told, like I, other tellers tell this same story, 
but none of us tell it the same. Oh, I'm sure, because everybody has their own little personality they put into it. Exactly, exactly, and it's always so much fun. And, and as I said earlier, in case somebody's just now joining us, uh, Deborah Naren Holland will be telling the Tall Betsy story mm -hmm. uh, beginning at 4.30, and she'll be telling it until 7 um, as groups come. So it'll be, if you come and nobody's telling a story right that minute, wait just a second. That's right, because somebody will pick up the story and tell it. I mean, it, it's going to happen. They, they move it along really well. We do. And then in November, uh, coming up on November the 10th at the library in the big community room, and that's another wonderful asset we oh, have. Oh, that's a marvelous facility. It's our library. Mm -hmm. I would stack it up against any mm -hmm. in the southeast. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Uh, but on... Um, Thursday, uh, November the 10th, will be Telebration. Uh, Telebration began back, I think it was in the 70s or 80s, um, in the Northeast. A gentleman wanted to have a night of storytelling. And from one small group, it's gone worldwide. Wow. And it's usually the weekend before Thanksgiving, but with all the activities around, people are now saying the entire month of November. Oh, okay. So when we're together, um, those two times in November, on the 10th and then again on the 13th, there will be other groups somewhere in the world at that very same time telling stories. That are telling. How exciting. It's a free event. Um, the one on Thursday, November the 10th, will begin at 7. We'll go about an hour, hour 15. Um, we'll have local tellers telling their very best tales. Then again on Sunday afternoon, beginning at 2, again in the library, um, on November the 13th, we'll have storytelling again. Uh, you may have some of the same tellers, but they will be telling different stories. You can come to both events and not hear the same story twice. And this is free? It's free to the public. Uh, we will take donations if anyone mm -hmm. is so inclined, and we will um, give some of those you know, to the library because they are so good to let us have the space. Right, because you all have your monthly meetings there too, We have don't our you? monthly meetings there, and the public is invited. Uh, we meet in the community room on the second Tuesday of the month, um, beginning at 7 o'clock. We begin with stories. We always begin, uh, we'll begin our meeting with one or two announcements in case somebody has to leave, and then we launch right into stories. We do stories for a solid hour. Whoa. And then if people need to leave, um, they can feel free to get up. We'll take a quick, quick, quick break and have any announcements. Uh, getting ready for future events, of course, there's always a little bit of business you have to conduct right, when right. you have anything like Anytime that. Anytime you have a club or organization meeting, you still have to do a little bit of business. Especially if you've got an event coming up. Right. And people are welcome to come. Um, we have coaching. Uh, what people would see at a typical meeting, um, aside from just telling stories, uh, just for the enjoyment of it, would be if um, a member says, I'm working on a story and mm -hmm. I need a little help. Well get up and tell the story mm -hmm. and then we have trained coaches members of our guild are trained have taken workshops are trained coaches how in neat. storytelling and we always begin with how far do you want to go it's a safe place to tell stories for anybody that's a beginning storyteller the guild is a safe place well do you want compliments of course everybody wants well, compliments well yes that's how our life rotates and we always find something good to say about how the story was presented, how the, uh, their stagecraft, how the story was crafted. And then we would say, now, do you, um, can we say questions, ask you questions? Well, sure, if you're comfortable with it. Uh, well, I didn't really understand. What did you mean when you said this? Or what did you mean when you said that? Well, at that point, the storyteller is beginning to understand maybe a point in my story needs clarification. Mm -hmm. And then the next is, do you have questions for us? And the teller at that point can say, well, how did that happen? How did that sound? Should I have done? And then there's one more step, and that is, we don't call it criticism, criticisms, but we call it suggestions. And at any point in that little journey, the teller can stop and say, well, I'm fine with just compliments. That's right. You've hurt my feelings, now stop. <laughs> <laughs> we never hurt anybody's feelings. That We never, never hurt anybody's feelings that we know of, and we would never intend to. Well, I think that's a marvelous, positive way to reinforce these people that that want to be a storyteller. Exactly. We and this is almost a lost art. Oh, the art of the oral tradition is the, it's the oldest art. Right. It is. When the caveman went out, even before he put the pictures on the cave walls, mm -hmm. that graphic arts that I know you love, 
he probably told somebody about that big mammoth that he killed all by himself. Exactly. Whether it happened or not. That's right. And it's kind of like the, we always laugh at the fishing tales, you know. Actually, the fish you caught was this big, but the time it gets told about ten times, that it was a big thing. Well, the storyteller's creed is never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> I love that. I love it. And I will tell you that Judy's a member of the Allied Arts. She mm -hmm. represents the Cleveland Storytellers Guild on the Allied Arts. And we do have some of our Cherry's Jubilee money that we put back in with the storytellers so they can go into the schools and, and work with some of the students and telling stories and, and doing some things like that. And I think you all did a workshop this past summer with Truesdale? We did. Uh, Maureen Olin and I went to uh, Truesdale, which is the most wonderful place. It is. Here. It's a wonderful, wonderful facility, wonderful people. Um, and we spent three days, I think it was, two, day, two days it was. And we helped them develop stories. The most wonderful thing, and Allied Arts does more than that. Um, Elizabeth Rose will be visiting six area schools. Right, and we're thrilled to do that because that. we want to bring the arts whether it's visual arts, oral arts, movement arts, we want to bring the arts into our schools. And being able to do that with uh, the support we get from Allied Arts and the support that they get from the public coming to Cherry's Jubilee right. every year, um, it just gets different perspectives. Um, we have art teachers, we have wonderful art yes, teachers. Yes, we do. But every now and then to have somebody different come in Right. And do something that maybe they hadn't thought of or weren't trained in or wanted to do. Right. But didn't have time or resources. Exactly. And we are so proud to be a part of, of Allied Arts and are so happy with the support that you all give us in helping us spread our art. And see, it's really wonderful. I mean, this, this is a mutual admiration society going here in case y'all hadn't <laughs> noticed. But what's so wonderful is that when we start to bring artists into the schools, we don't have to go out of our own little locale here to bring great storytellers into our schools. Uh, I'm looking at the clock. We're going to take a real quick commercial break, and we're going to come back because Judy has another story to tell us. And then we want to tell you some things that are going to be happening this weekend, this Halloween weekend. So don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge 
Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. And it's good to have you all with us. I guess you noticed that we're orange uh, because we've, we're dressed for Halloween. I have a little spook house and Judy has a little ghost. And then I have on this witch's hat, which are available at the Red Ribbon, by the way, if anybody needs a witch hat with the boa feathers on it for this weekend. Um, and we were talking about Allied Arts, so I have a little plug here I want to get in. Allied Arts uh, Cherries Funds, that's money from Cherries Jubilee, we gave this year $20,000 to the Arts and Ed Committee of the Allied Arts, and uh, they're spending it and bringing in artists. And Jackie Wattenbarger, who happens to be a member of the Allied Arts and also was, was a treasurer for the Cleveland Community Concert Association, has written a couple of Tennessee Arts Commission grants uh, to bring in an artist called Todd Green. Todd plays roughly 30-plus instruments, not all at the same time, but some of them he does play at the same time. And he has been in the schools this week, and he will be in the schools some um, next week, I think. I, I have a semi-schedule in my mind. He was at Tennessee Christian yesterday, and I've forgotten where he's going to be today. Mm, should have brought that list. But anyway, Saturday at 4 o'clock, he will be at Broad Street in the Triplet Hall for the Unity Center, children. And it's free. And any of the public is invited to attend. The only thing we ask is that you go in from the Worth Street side of Broad Street and go on in the Triplet Hall. And Todd Green will be there with all this array of instruments. And he will play. Uh, he will do about an hour, hour and 15 minute concert. And then Tuesday night, he will be at that new marvelous facility at Bradley High School, the Performing Arts Center, at 7 o'clock. And here again, Allied Arts and, and the Community Concert Association are bringing him in. If you have a season ticket to the Concert Association, you get in free. If not, it's $10, and Todd is extremely talented. We're thrilled that we've gotten him in here. Due to the fact that county had fall break a different week from city, we've had Todd in here for two weeks because we've had to shift him between schools, but I know he's gone to uh, Cleveland Middle, Okoye Middle, Bradley High School, uh, Cleveland High School, uh, Tennessee Christian, uh, Park View, and there's some other places that if he hasn't been, he's going. So, but we're going to have Judy tell us another story. She said she had a short Appalachian tale mm -hmm. to tell us. So we're going to let Judy tell us another tale. We tell all kinds of stories down at the Guild. We have right. personal stories, folk tales from around the world. Uh, but my favorite ones are the Appalachian stories. Now, there is this woman that had a reputation of when her husband was gone, she might entertain a male caller or two in her house. Well, it just so happened he was gone, and one of her male friends had found out that he was going to be gone for the day, so he came over. Well, they were sitting on the couch and heard a noise on the front porch. And she said, oh, that's my husband. If he comes in and catches you, he'll kill you for sure. Well, he jumped, and just so happened in the corner, right there next to the kitchen was her big kraut tub, big old wooden <laughs> tub about this big, that she would, you know, cook her crowd in, chop her crowd in. Well, he jumped in it. Well, the door opened and it wasn't her husband, it was another one of her gentleman friends. Well, they settled in and they were talking on the couch and they heard another noise on the porch. She said, now that's my husband for sure. If he comes in here and catches you, he'll kill you for sure. Well, he jumped up and just as the door opened, he grabbed up that kraut tub and began to roll it out the door saying, my wife thanks you for a loan of her of your crap tub. <laughs> well, that husband, he opened the door. He even helped him push it on out on the porch. Well, to make a good show of it, the man shoved it on down the lane and stopped to get his breath. He said, boy, that thing's heavy, but boy, I got out of that slick. The other man jumped out of the crap tub and said, not as slick as I did. <laughs> and he ran on down the road. <laughs> so you see, folks, stories don't have to be real long. That was a cute story. And maybe two minutes. Well, we're, we've been told, Lynn Ford, the teller we had last year, who went into several schools thanks to yes, Allied Arts, yes. uh, said that storytelling has different levels. You've got your front porch storytellers, and that's when you're sitting around the kitchen table. Everybody's a storyteller. When, when you go home tonight and talk to Flavus, 
you can probably tell him the man in the crowd tub. Or you're going to tell him somebody you saw in the shop today. Well, that's a story. That's right. The first time any little kid comes up and says, Mommy, what I did today, that's a story. Mm -hmm. um, but she says those are front porch. Then you have those who work their craft. They go to schools and tell. Right. Then you have those who work their art. And that's those of us who maybe not only go to schools, but work on stage. Mm -hmm. This past weekend, I was in Crossville for right. a as, a, yeah. as a feature teller for a festival. That's the art. Uh, but she says all storytellers need to have varying lengths. Not everybody has a 30-minute story. You said that one was about two minutes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to have a one-minute right. or a two-minute or a three-minute story. And it was so entertaining. I mean, you know, I was just enthralled to see who was going to get caught where doing what. You know, It's an old, old, old story. Uh, whoop, I'm just throwing things around here. You threw Todd in the floor. I, I threw Todd in the floor, and I didn't mean to throw Todd in the floor. Um, for those of you that may not be aware... And I don't know how you can miss it. I don't know it. anybody that uh -uh. misses it. The block party is Monday night. Now, I will tell you all that the reason it is Monday night is that Monday is Halloween. Several years ago, Halloween came on a Sunday, which it does, what, every seven years or so? And uh, we decided, Main Street decided not to have it on Sunday night, that they'd have it on Saturday night. So they had the block party on Saturday night, and all the kids came downtown, and everybody had a great big time, and... And then on Sunday night, all the kids dressed up in their costumes and went trick-or-treating. And Centenary Avenue and those areas downtown that get swamped, got swamped two nights in a row. Well, they called Mayor Tom and they said, we are not happy about this. And so Mayor Tom then officially declared that the block party would be Halloween night. So in case any of you wonder why it's always Halloween night, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Now, we've been, this will be the 24th. Sharon Mark couldn't be with me today, but she sent me some info about the block party. This will be the 24th annual event. And uh, it begins at 5 p.m. And uh, the, it, just packed full of things. I mean, it is just packed full of things and people. Uh, Mars w does Treat Street. And folks, I can't tell you about what that is. We're talking tractor trailer loads of Mars candy comes in for them to give out on Treat Street. Now years ago when this first started, it was started by the, the city uh, police and the county sheriff's department uh, as a dare project, which was to keep the kids, to give the kids a safe Halloween. And now as it happens, Main Street has taken over and it has grown and grown and grown. Now the dare street will still be there with the uh, blow-ups, the inflatables, and mm -hmm. all of that. And so the police will still be there, and the sheriff's department will still be there. But Treat Street seems to be the thing that That's the kids the come for. That's right. And so Treat Street is going to be located on Church Street in front of the police service center. So if you need to wreck an order, if, you, if parents, if you need to go drive around and see where we're talking about, it's on Church Street in front of the police services center. And the venue for the entire block party includes Church Street, Okoy Street, Broad Street, First and Second Street. Um, so Sharon says to expect about 20,000 people. Oh, my goodness. Now, we laugh because Mayor Tom Rowland can do what we call the evangelistic count of how many people are there. Uh, he has said up to 40,000, you know. But when you get down there in the crowd, you may think that that's, that's the situation. Um, there's two stages with entertainment. The main stage uh, at the will be right there at the Courthouse Plaza. And uh, at 5 o'clock on the main stage will be the Chill Howie Dance and Performing Arts. And at 5.30, Ridge Farm Band, which is a local rockabilly group, will be on. And then at 7.45, Entice Band will be back. And, and they were here, in, I think, in 2009. Mm -hmm. So they're back by popular demand. And then we have the fun stage at the post office annex, and the costume party starts at 5 o'clock. And it's a contest, and there's different age groups from little tiny ones through adults. I have judged this before, and I'm telling you folks, some of the costumes are phenomenal, and they're homemade. A lot of them are homemade, and the creativity of the parents that make these costumes is unbelievable. So they have trophies, and they have candy prizes for all age groups, infants to adults, and then after that, at about 6.30, they will have karaoke and music by Detour DJ Lars Hansen. 
So there's all kinds of activities going on. And then you have the vendors. And I think Sharon told me the other day we had 50 vendors that will be set up. And it's just like like the Kiwanis Club does the pizza. Or it, it's, it's different, organizations. different organizations. There's plenty of food to eat. Um, so don't worry about, you know, not getting, getting there at 5 o'clock and, and having to worry about eating somewhere. Um, and Brenda Sheeney, is, she, he, she, he, he, that is the toughest name for me to say. Brenda, Sorry, Brenda. Sheehy, who is the Main Street Board President, said, the Halloween block party is a great downtown tradition and we are excited to offer families in our area a night filled with fun and entertainment. And it is, folks. It's, it's going to be, it's really going to be fun. But it couldn't be done without the sponsors. So we have Mars Chocolate, of course, and Pioneer Credit are our platinum. Uh, the gold sponsors are Johnston Coca-Cola, the City of Cleveland Police Department, the Brandon County Sheriff's Department, and on the silver level, Brenda Lawson and Associates, Larry Hill Ford, Waste Connections of Tennessee, Andrew Johnson Bank, and on the bronze level, BB&T Bank, Chill Howie Dance and Performing Arts, Easy Auto, Ed Jacob and Associates, First Tennessee Bank, H&R Block, Jones Management Services, and Sky Ridge Medical Center, and then you have the in-kind sponsors like the Apple Valley Orchard, Bradley County, the City of Cleveland, uh, the Bradley County, Cleveland Bradley Courts, Community Court Service. Folks, they come in and clean up. On Tuesday morning, you will not know anything happened on Monday night. But when you leave Monday night, you'll wonder how in the world they're ever <laughs> really? going to clean this up. Uh, the Cleveland Daily Banner, Cleveland Utilities, Cook's Food Store. They furnish the orange bags that go down Treat Street. Um, Cleveland Utilities, uh, Keep America Beautiful, they furnish all the trash cans and everything that's out there. Shannon and Associates Advertising Group, SunTrust Bank, SunTrust hosts the hospitality suite up on their top floor, and WCLE Mix 1041. And these are the people that make possible the, the block party, along with Sharon Marr and her group from Main Street that um, are wonderful. Now, I'm a member of Broad Street Church, and we're going to do something a little bit different this year. We've always, in our little cubby hole there on Broad Street, we've always handed out packages of lifesavers and with a little message from Broad Street. So this year, we're going to open the sanctuary of Broad Street Church for people to come in and see our sanctuary at night, and we will have our organist. Josh will be in there playing. Uh, we will be dressed as John Wesley or Susanna Wesley, and... Uh, Josh will be playing Reformation hymns and maybe a couple of Bach etudes or something like that. So the the our big beautiful pipe organ will be going, oh, that's and and so that should be a real fun experience. Uh, and we'll have a little treat to hand out to the people that want to come through. So the block party Monday night, folks. You know you'll hear more about it. I'm sorry, I, I'm sure tomorrow from Dan mm -hmm. and probably Monday morning from Dan. But we're going to take a real quick commercial break, and Jeannie and I are going to come back and tell you anything else that you need to know about this weekend. So don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge. Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. 
Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. are back. I'm Nancy Kaysen. I have a little gift shop down on the, at Five Points called the Red Ribbon. And with me today has been Judy Baker from the Cleveland Storytelling Guild and she has been telling some tales. And she will be telling tales on Monday night at the museum starting at four o'clock. So any of you that want to take your small children there, do because it'll be a very enjoyable time. Now this afternoon, Baby Bop book time at the library uh, at, from one until three at the community room. And Judy and I were just talking about how wonderful our library facility is. It's Fantastic place. Beautiful. Go down. And Check out books. They do. The, the Baby Bop does music, tumbling, stories, and a lot of fun for ages three and under, and they want you to wear play clothes. And then uh, on the 29th, from 7.30 to 9.30, they're going to have Teen Autumn Masquerade. And the, it, it's free, and you come in costume, and they said, please keep the costumes clean. Now, that doesn't mean don't get them dirty. That just means let's keep everything on the up and up. And uh, there will be henna art, video clips, and pictures for the library Facebook pages and video games. And this is for ages 13 to 17. So that's a wonderful thing to do. Now, I want to tell you some other things that are happening. Uh, Bradley Square Mall and Westwood Baptist Church on Halloween night, we'll have the fall festival beginning at six o'clock at the Bradley Square Mall. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to go to the block party, then you can go up to the mall. And we have had people that go to the mall and then go to the block party or vice versa, so whichever. Now tomorrow night at seven o'clock at the museum is the, ju the Junior Achievement Monster Ball. Tickets are $45 and you're going, <gasps> $45. Well folks, for $45 you get some of Pam Matthews' wonderful food and she does the most creative things. We had uh, a gentleman's leg on the table. Actually, it was a it was a, like a, a loin roast, oh. and but she had a shoe on it so that you know as she sliced it for sandwiches, you, it looked like somebody's leg. We had a mummy made out of her wonderful chocolate chip cheese ball. Um, we it, she just does all kinds of things, and I've talked to to Pam, and she's really working on this, and she's excited about it. So. Um, Forty-five dollars, adult beverages, costumes. If you want to, they do have a costume party. Flavis and I will go in our normal costume that we've always gone to every Halloween party we've gone to in thirty-one years of marriage. He goes as the world's greatest fisherman, and I go as the best catch of his life. Oh, how so sweet! So isn't that adorable? Oh. So we just wear whatever we had on when we entered the door of the for our costume. Uh, Candy's Creek Baptist Church is having their trunk and treat, and folks, I think that's Sunday night. I passed Candy's Creek Baptist Church going and coming, and this morning I meant to look coming in, and it was dark, so I didn't get that time. But you can call Candy's Creek Baptist Church and see when their trunk and treat is. I know Broad Street had theirs last night for our Wednesday night activities. Waterville Elementary on Dalton Pike's Fall Festival is tomorrow night uh, from 5 to 8. Live auction starts at 8.15. Hay rides, games, food, prizes, really creepy spook room. Mm. I have no idea. But that's tomorrow night at Waterville Elementary. And you know, anytime schools have spring or fall festivals, they're making money for the school. So if you can get out and support that, that would be great. At Bradley Central High Coral Department, which there's an arts area. There's an arts area. Auction Chili Dinner, Saturday, October the 29th. It starts at 6 p.m. It's $5 a person. It's in the Bradley High School cafeteria. Lots of great items to bid on, um, ooh, including lookout tickets, Ruby Falls tickets, Dollywood tickets, uh, appliances. Whoa, okay, this sounds like it might be fun. 
a lot of fun. Come out and eat a great dinner and bid on some awesome items and hear the Vocal Motion Show Choir. And this is to support the choral arts at Bradley High School. Valley View Elementary is having a, um, at the Samples Memorial Baptist Church on Samples Road in Cleveland. Uh, their date is the 29th and it starts, it's from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So see, you could morning, afternoon, evening. Uh, they have fun games, fellowship, gospel singing, car show, inflatable slides, lots of fun things to do. And so Valley View, so there again, you know you're supporting a school. Uh, the first ever Oak Grove Ruritan Chili Cook-Off Dinner will be on the 29th. That's Saturday from 4 to 7. So see, we got 1 to 3, 4 to 7, and 7 to 8, 15. I mean, we could do your whole day Saturday, folks, if you'd like for us to. Uh, you could sample chili and hot dogs. It's $4 a person. And um, it's at the Oak, uh, Oak Grove Ruritan Center over there next to Oak Grove School. Mm -hmm. Uh, Habitat for Humanity next weekend. We'll give you a little breather. Uh, actually, it's, it's next Thursday at 6 o'clock, so I'll probably mention it again next Thursday morning. Uh, they're going to have the dedication, the Four Family Home Dedication Ceremony. Habitat, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group in our town uh, that, that just does wonderful things. In fact, um, they have brought me like three truckloads of furniture over for Cherry's Jubilee not done, of course, but it's for me to tell the artist to come get and, and get it done for, uh, for Cherry's Jubilee. So I cannot support Habitat enough. And then the annual community food drive uh, that Southern Heritage Bank does begins November the 1st. That's Tuesday. That would be the day after Halloween where we've already crammed all these things in. But you can go by their three office locations, the one on Key Street, the one on Georgetown Road that I pass every day, and the one on Dalton Pike, and bring in your canned goods. And uh, these are for United Way to put in their different facilities, you know, the Boys and Girls mm -hmm. Club, the, the shelter, all, all these areas that need the canned food. So, you know, stop by, look in your pantry right now, and, and bring in or go to the grocery store, and some grocery stores have a two for one. Yeah. Or pick up an extra can of something. Right, when get you go to the grocery out. store, just, you know, you're gonna get two cans of baked beans, get another can of baked beans. So that happens starting Tuesday, and it goes Tuesday, one, two, three, four, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I think on Friday, we'll have the radio out at the main office at Southern Heritage, and a lot of exciting things going on, photographs to put on Facebook of, of your organization. Uh, I know I had lunch yesterday, United Way, wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Uh, it was the report luncheon, and children from the Signal Center were there in costume, and they trigger-treated at our table, and we had candy that, that had been donated, and as the kids came by, we filled their little baskets, and, and one little girl had a little pumpkin about this big, and she'd already filled it completely up, and we had to go get a plastic bag from somebody. So. These are all the activities, folks, that are going on. I'm getting a wonderful signal from our production crew that says I have about 45 seconds left. So, Judy, thank you Thanks so for much. Me. This has this, been fun. It has been. It's been a little bit different venue. The reason you did not see Byron today is he had another obligation, but he did email me, so it wasn't like I was sitting here going, oh, my goodness, where's Byron? Because I knew he wasn't going to be here, but Byron is with Landmark Insurance and Brokerage, and they are one of our sponsors, and he usually has a little 15-minute set here where we talk about different insurances. And after the tornadoes on April the 27th, insurance has been a prime topic for us, insured, underinsured, uninsured. So we thank Byron, and, and he will be back with us next week. So Halloween night, there's plenty to do, starting at 4 o'clock at the museum with the Cleveland Storyteller Guild and then jump right on over to Treat Street and thanks to Mars Chocolate for all they do for Treat Street because we just absolutely could not have Treat Street without them. And they're volunteers and they have the M&M peoples are there and it's just wonderful. It's just great. It really is. A wonderful community. It, that you cannot say enough good things about Cleveland. So folks, we thank you all so much for being with us today. I will see you next Thursday. Dan will be with you in the morning. So. Be sure you check in with us next Thursday. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.